Uh, all right, so for those of you who don't know, uh, my brother is the uh, co-host of Fight the Future with Dan and Paul. He would be the Dan part of that. Um, and for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a uh, podcast on Loading Ready Run where we talk about young adult uh, dystopias. So we, we did, uh, you know, talking about The Hunger Games, talking about uh, Maze Runner. There you go, Cammy Diddy. Yeah. 20,852. Keep those donations coming in, guys. And, uh, but the idea, the idea is about talking, talking about these, uh, these movies and, uh, and books and things is we're talking about them uh, in the context of the actual, uh, the, the world that is being created. So, I mean, obviously, a lot of these young adult stories, the actual, you know, plot and characters can be quite silly. But they still have all this this sort of world building stuff in it that I always find quite interesting. So I found even like before we did uh, Fight the Future, I found I would often like read, just like read like the Wikipedia page about some series that everyone is really, like, you know, like the Mage Runner or whatever, just like, what is, what is going on in this series? Uh, so uh, that, was, uh, that was one of the things that I like to do. Um, so uh, yeah, my, Dan is in the same kind of area. He like he enjoyed that as well, and so we uh, decided to start this podcast. Um, we've been doing it for uh, almost a year now, uh, every two weeks, and uh, you can check it out on loadingmaderun.com. Um, that's got links to it, and wow, uh, yeah, you are going to at this rate, Cam. You will very easily raise more money in, on your shift. Mm -hmm. Then we raise in all of Desert Bus One. Seems good. A desert. This will, this will be my first you, desert buck. You will have yeah. You will have earned over a desert buck. So uh, we're just working on Skype. So okay. So yeah, we're just working on uh, on hooking that up. Uh, my my brother is currently living in uh, Italy. So when, that's one of the reasons why. It's nice, we don't usually, you know, often the phone calls that come in are, you know, they come in at like six, six o'clock or something uh, because we want to do it at a time that's convenient for the person phoning in. But of course, with the time zones, uh, it means that we can go uh, to, in, to a morning one. So, anyway. Hopefully, uh, this is going to work. And you can uh, talk to us. We will see. But uh, how's it going out there, Chad? Everyone doing well? All right, well, uh, let us switch over to Dan. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a great face. Oh, was there some technical problems there? <laughs> you were... Uh, no, I got to. Hello. Did you, uh, did you see we just hit... Uh, 2.75 million lifetime. Holy cow, that's amazing. Congratulations, you guys. I've been following this, and uh, you're doing amazing things. It's already over 300,000 now? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. And there was some activity just before I logged on, right? That you just sold something for a lot of money? Uh, well, no, it's, we haven't even sold it yet. We, uh, we've got a, a donation challenge going, or donation drive going right now for this uh, Magic the Gathering Commander's Arsenal uh, that uh, is clearly in quite high demand. So it's just, it's just going up. Wow, okay, well, well keep me updated about that. How much money is it going for now? Uh, well, the command, people, are, uh, have to, oh, people just have to donate $5.02 to be entered into uh, a draw for it. So, I see, uh, Raph. Yeah, so we've got the silent auctions, we've got the live auctions, and we also have these donation drives. Is that some kind of a scam where you skim off the two cents at the end and, <laughs> like, 
Although, the surrounding air? No, but now that you mention it, that would be a great idea. <laughs> no. We, the two cents is so that we can make sure that people uh, are actually trying to enter this particular thing. They aren't just donating $5 to be donating $5. Yeah, imagine if I got sent that card. I'd be like, all right, well, I'll put my cup on it, I guess. <laughs> right, exactly. We want to make sure it's people who want the thing. Yeah, well, hello, everybody. And, and there's Cam, yeah. one of our, our most recent guests. Hi, Dan. Yeah, it just works out for the timing quite well. Yeah, Cam was the guest for Ender's Game, which we just did recently. Uh, and that turned out to be a relatively popular episode. I think oh. people really enjoyed it. Good, good. Glad to hear it. It was a lot of fun. I got to dust off my old um, uh, English major skills. Yeah, I, I could feel that because like, you brought out some really deep insights about the, uh, the danger room or the, whatever it's called. The oh, practice the, the room. battle room. Yeah. Battle room, not the danger room. That's X-Men. Oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, where, where they're all floating around in space and bouncing off stars and so on. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that was... So that was neat. As a place of a sanctuary, as an escape from the kind of pressures of battle school, mm -hmm. you could just float around in there. Yeah, as a, as a kind of um, a magic circle, I think. Magic circle. So what is your magic circle now, Cam? You're driving? Uh, yeah. Um, How do you maintain that level of performance? You know, it's, as, it's, it's hard work. Yeah. I've done a lot of cross-training, a lot of meditation. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. I've been carefully moderating my diet. Uh, is cross training for Desert Bus? Would that be just playing other video games? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I, I've been, I've been uh, Tokyo a drifting a lot in real life. Yeah, uh -huh. driving on the left hand side of the road a lot. Yeah, opening and closing doors. It's it's been exhausting. <laughs> Cleaning windshields. But uh -huh. I, I think we can all see that it's paying off right now. Yeah, I, I saw you have zero crashes. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. There's still time. Oh yeah, no, There's I can still punt right this hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we talked about Ender's Game most recently, and that's one that kind of goes back into a lot of people's childhoods and mm -hmm. imaginations. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like yeah. Ender's Game is one of those things that, you know, the movie came out in, I think, 2014. But I, I, I feel like it's, it's one of those movies that's been, like, in production or in, in various phases of Hollywood hell for, like you know, dozens of years. Yeah, I think it was optioned as a movie very quickly after its publication. But, and, and, then it, and then the kid that they're going to have as Ender keeps outgrowing the role, so they have to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. As soon as the Ender develops acne and has a growth spurt, they have to move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. It's very hard to cast six- or seven-year-old kids. Yeah. Um, so they cast a 14-year-old in this case, but... It was very small. <laughs> so, yeah. So, this time, like, it's really great to revisit these as part of the podcast because we realize stuff that we never did the first time about how messed up they are often. Hmm. And, but, yeah, I think that The Giver was also a passion project that kind of got rammed through in recent years. And that was also not very well worth it. No, <laughs> the no. Giver. But, anyway... <laughs> So you are the, is this the Dawn Guard I'm speaking to? This is the Dawn Guard, yes. Dawn Guard, woo! We, dawn, we guard the Dawn from 6 a.m. to 12. Yeah, I'm very excited. What is it? On comes the Dawn, it's the Dawn that we guard. Yeah, yeah, guard, both the guarding and Dawn and, and the Dawn are, are important parts of the whole song. So you've been sorted into the, the Dawn Guard. You've been... You've been selected by a selection process. Yeah, a, a long and arduous selection process based on how early you're willing to wake up. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> For you, it's very early. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, yeah, James and I actually have been, have been doing the early morning shifts for a couple of years now, basically because we're willing to do it. Yep. <laughs> and nobody else is. <laughs> Next year, we switch off. So we taped the podcast... Uh, 8,500 kilometers apart and nine hours of time zone difference. Yeah. So, and what's, what's yeah. great is that we often have, we'll sometimes have a, a, a guest, um, and because a lot of your friends are on the East Coast of the United States, we'll have somebody, you know, we'll have me in Victoria, somebody in Boston, 
and then you in uh, Italy. And uh, yeah, time zones and then That's daylight Esco. savings can get confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. So, but one time we tried to do a podcast where it would be Paul in the evening and me in the morning. Uh, and it was both of our worst possible times. Mm. We, were, we won't tell you which episode, but Paul was incredibly low energy and so was I. <laughs> so it's just like, uh, yeah, this movie was fine. Whatever. <laughs> After 9 p.m., Paul is not at his top peak to, capacity. To be fair, we started that. We started that at midnight for me. So it was. Uh, oh yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Technical issues. So I've been so inspired by Dawn Guard, the cool name and cool logo, that I, I got a tattoo. What? <laughs> you see this? Dawn Guard tattoo. Nice. Yeah, stand up a little bit. You're cut off at the bottom. There you go. Wow. But I don't want to be just one thing. I want to be. Zeta. <laughs> I uh, like be. Uh, you're, you're divergent is what you're saying. After hours. Zeta, I'm divergent. You got to stand up again. You're, you're being blocked by the bottom of the... You're so divergent. I want to be all those things. I'm divergent. I feel I'm at least 99% divergent. Wasn't it you who, were saying, who was saying that in uh, Tumblr and Divergent, Tumblr's just, uh, you know, everyone says that they're one thing, but I feel that I'm more than one thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's just everybody. Everybody is that. <laughs> uh. Yeah, divergent so, or sleep deprived. Sometimes <laughs> it can be difficult to tell the difference. The, right. Uh, so I mean, we uh, so, actually somebody somebody uh, asked um, what would be needed to turn the already quite dystopian desert bus into a dystopian young adult novel. Oh goodness! Well, like we need to have some girl who comes into Cam's life here. You mean, maybe somebody else who's who's like waiting wistfully at the bus stop. Yeah, and saying basically, you have to know the truth. The world is not what you think it is. <laughs> there's a, something behind the bus. <laughs> and you go, oh yeah, there, there totally is. There's like a trailer there. Mm. <laughs> oh, it could be. Yeah, so we you need a to, love. You need a love triangle. Maybe another bus comes along. Another bus. And well, she, has so to, maybe the she has to decide. Are actually, maybe the buses are the protagonists in this. It's mm. like, all we know is the driving. And that is our role in life. To drive between Tucson and Las Vegas. It's all we've known. We were chosen this at, at our 12th birthday to be the <laughs> right, Tucson. Yeah, the, the, at the choosing. At the choosing. That, that's a that's actually I mean one of the things I kind of wanted to talk about was that was this idea of uh, you know we we talked about it a little bit in the podcast but the, the how many of these there's sort of these tropes I guess mm -hmm. that that show up over and over again you know one, now that we've we've watched quite a few of these uh, movies and read books and stuff it's pretty amazing uh how how often the same stuff shows up again. Clearly, it's stuff that is uh, very much on the minds of, uh, or at least that the authors think is on the minds of young adults. These, especially yeah. the choosing parts. In fact, in fact, Paul, I have a contest for you. I have a challenge for you to okay. see how much you've been paying attention as we've watched these 15 movies or so and read 15 books. This, th I have a challenge called Ceremony Day. Ceremony Day. Ceremony Day. In this, I'm going to name the name of a ceremony, and you have to tell me which young adult dystopia it's from. Oh, no. Okay. All right. I'll start off easier. Capping Day. Uh, okay, so that'd be from the tripods. Yes, correct. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> All right, one point. To Gryffindor. No. Dawn Patrol. Dawn Guard. <laughs> you should have figured that out before you got the tattoo, I think. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Regret. 
Tattoo I thought it was Dawn Patrol. Oh, now I look stupid. Okay, Axis Day. Axis Day. Axis Day? Axis Day. Oh, Axis Day. So these day. are all ceremonies that happen on your uh, that 12th one's, or 14th birthday. That and one's that from... Uh, uh, your initiation in the corrupt adult world of the young adult dystopia. That's Devil on My Back, I think. Yes, correct. You're doing amazing. Uh, Reaping Day. Why don't... Reap- we could also let people in the back... Reaping Day. Paul doesn't get it. Isn't That's Reaping Day from Hunger Games? Yeah. Hunger Games? We're gonna All right. S- Hunger Games. Right. Hooray. Points. You guys are doing amazing. Ceremony of 12. The Ceremony of 12. So is that... There are... My answer for every question will be the Hunger Games. The Hunger <laughs> Games? <laughs> is, is that one Divergent? Yes, it's the second reaping of the Hunger Games. Diver- no, it's not. Divergent, because Divergent only has... Padres? Only has four or f- the pod race and the Hunger Games. No, you're getting further away. <laughs> huh. uh, the ceremony of twelve. Just trying to and think. Nobody knows. Just trying to think. This is which, why this movie did not do very well. Which one? <laughs> the giver. Is that? Yes, it? correct. Who said that? Nice. Mike said Points that. Points to that back. person. Mike or nice. All right. Here's our blogger at the back there. Excellent. Is that because there's 12 different things that you could possibly be, or does it happen when you're 12? I don't know. Ceremony of 12. Yeah, there's probably 12 wise elders. Oh, right. Like Meryl Streep and uh, Jeff Bridges being one of them. Uh, does, See, Jeff Bridges, kind of created... does Jeff Bridges count as one of the wise elders? I guess. I mean, he does a lot of brr, brr, brr and farting, I assume. <laughs> uh... So... He's almost a reason to watch this movie, but not really. Yeah. I, I get the uh, impression that the difference between Harry Potter and uh, dystopian young adult fiction is that at no point do the kids grok that the houses are highly dysfunctional. Mm. And yeah, that they Harry should Potter. rebel against, against the house, against the sorting <laughs> hat. Right. Harry Potter is a young adult dystopia. Yeah. If you look at it a certain way. Except everyone kids are is being like. manipulated to their death. Yeah. And, well, everyone is really proud to fly the colors. Right, instead of being like, you know, I don't actually think I fit into this mold. Brainwashed. Yeah, where are the divergence of Harry Potter? <laughs> yeah. Like, who's who's breaking out of the system? Oh, it happens at age twelve, apparently. They were supposed to be okay. age twelve at the beginning of that movie? Holy crap. <laughs> they did not look very you generally add about six years is the rule. Or in the case of four eleven years. <laughs> As in, in that, that's a that's a uh, divergent in joke. Yes, the uh, the the love interest for the girl is so she's she's supposed to be sixteen, being played by like a nineteen year old, I think. Huh. Uh, she's supposed to be, and she falls in love with a guy who's supposed to be nineteen and is thirty one. Oh. <laughs> the actress <laughs> <laughs> really looks like it too. As I say in the podcast, like he's got a receding of, hairline. <laughs> It looks Ew. like James Franco looks like now. Ew. Ew. Anyway. Okay, last one. So you have to match which one goes with which. Assignment day and choosing ceremony, City of Ember and Divergent. Assignment day, choosing ceremony. Which is City of Ember and which is Divergent? These are all uh, young adult Choo- dystopias that we've choosing, covered in our podcast. Choosing ceremony would be Divergent and assignment day would be would be uh, City of Ember. Correct! Because right. the whole thing with City of Ember is that you don't get to choose. City, City of Ember, the great part, that, so everyone else is like, you know, you, either you are observed or you choose, you know, what you feel is your best house and then you get locked into it or whatever, right? Assignment day, they literally draw it out of a hat. So it's like, you get to be... Mold scraper. <laughs> That's your job forever. Oh, you get to be mayor. There's your job. <laughs> it was really or, or something like like the the no, job stop. Oh, bus stop. Nice. Yeah, bus stop. Woo! There was nobody there. Where did we get to? Uh, Tucson or no? We just got a no, bus no. We thing. just got. We just. It, it wasn't a bus. It wasn't the end of the line. It wasn't. It was just a bus stop just... along the way. 
Oh there was God. nothing there. There's the the futility oh, is that there's, guys. there's bus stops along the way that you can stop at oh, and open your doors, but there's nobody ever there. Oh God! But actually, border, stopping at the bus stop. So excited. Stopping at the bus stop without uh, your if you miss the bus stop and you stop in the middle of the road, your bus will overheat. Yeah, it's so it's, it's a it's a test of skill. Yeah, it's a desert bus for Godot. So which young adult dystopia does it most represent, resemble already? Mm -hmm. uh, the myth the, uh... of Sisyphus. <laughs> well, it's the one we didn't do, the, uh, the walk. <laughs> they made the myth of Sisyphus into a trilogy, uh, and they're starring Shirsha and Rohan, I believe. <laughs> Again, all my references now are young adult dystopias. Nobody understands what I'm talking about. Uh, you just need to so, like, hang out with seen more Breaking cool Bad. People. I've never seen House of Cards, but I have seen The Giver in City of Ember. Have to reevaluate your priorities. Yeah, I I often think that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was gonna say one of the other things that uh, uh, one of the things people might not. Oh, nice! That, that is impressive. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, what was that? So in in seven hours and n nine minutes, nineteen, 19 minutes, uh, Cam has now earned as much as we earned in the first year of Desert Bus. Whoa! <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Which we call awesome. a Desert Buck. <laughs> a Desert Buck. I love it. But the uh, so, yeah yeah you were saying the road is probably the closest one the Viggo Mortensen. Yeah. No no no. I, well I was thinking or or the the walk was it the. The long walk. Oh, Which we didn't walk, actually end up doing. The long, the long walk. The uh, Stephen King one. is more popular. Huh. With, with titles like this. <laughs> yeah, the longest, the long walk. It's called. Yeah, that one is very, very disturbing. Oh yeah, that's where basically everybody dies on the course of a long marathon. Yeah, we didn't. We ended up did not doing that one because it's just like. Uh, it's just a bunch of kids dying after one after another. <laughs> this is not very and good. It, it's like how many ways Which can you say? Technically, that's also what you know, battle royale is. But there's more stuff there. Yeah, it's like how many ways can you say my legs are tired? <laughs> hmm. It turns out quite a lot. Stephen King wrote the book, and so he could come up with a lot of mm -hmm. ways of saying that. But uh, one, one of the things I was, I was thinking about um, that people might not know is, as you talked about, you're in Italy. And so you, whenever we're watching the movies, whenever possible, you're watching them in Italian with English subtitles. That's uh, right. In order, as, as a slight justification for spending time watching the movies so you can practice your Italian. Yeah, sorry, I can't come out to the bar tonight. I have to stay home and watch Insurgent. <laughs> But at least uh, you're practicing your Italian. At least I'm practicing Italian. And by the way, that has my favorite line from any of the Divergent series in Italian. Uh, so the, instead of Dauntless, which is the faction that is the most uh, courageous, in Italian it's Intrepido, Intrepido, which sounds cooler. Yeah. Yeah. So the, my favorite line is, Sono Intrepido, ma non sono stupido. I am so, I'm dauntless, not stupid. Exactly. Nice. Yeah, but it, it has kind of a rhyme to it. Hmm. So uh, that's from Insurgent, uh, which very few people downloaded, I think because nobody went to the second movie. I, I like... Um, uh, one of the ones I, I was thinking about is because of the, the, the Italian thing, um, occasionally there's translation issues. Uh, and we uh, we talked about in one of the very first ones we did, um, City of Ember. Uh, there's uh, we were talking about the actual plot of the book or of the movie, uh, and you were like, "So what happened to the boat?" Uh, and because the the people escaping the city in on, on a river and these boats uh, is an important part of the plot, and they say, "What happened to the mayor's boat?" And and I was like, "What?" The mayor didn't have a boat. He never had a boat. <laughs> you're like, no, no, the, the, the one the guy was talking to him about. And you're like, I'm like, I, he never had a boat. 
And like, oh, and it, it I think was translated to because at one point a guy comes up to the mayor and goes, "Hey, your ship has come in." And so, and that was translated to <laughs> "Your boat is ready," <laughs> with the uh, and the subtitles. <laughs> and so I was like, "Why didn't right. you escape?" So I'm like, "Why? Why did you never go to the boat?" <laughs> it's like so. I'm basically like a a very confused person when I watch these movies. And Paul has to set me straight. I usually cut that out of the podcast because it's not that interesting to see all the confusion that Daniel got into in the plot. But maybe I'm underrating some of these movies because of that. <clears throat> so are there some legit questions or are uh, there yeah there's uh, I have another quiz for you later <laughs> all right well there's this uh, one much harder someone's saying since you've observed so much young adult dystopia stories now do you feel you have so an much. idea for how you how you would like to do your own dystopia story to like how you want to write your own like do you do you oh, have yeah. any do you have any 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 uh uh, desire to write your own young adult dystopia, cash in on the whole craze. Well, we've talked about this before, but we are closer in age to the people doing the oppressing than we are to the <laughs> yeah. young children who are bucking the system. So why not have a dystopia from that perspective? Let's have you're the ruler of a community that lives in a bubble and everything is controlled, and every once in a while there's like a 14-year-old who's feisty and is like beating the system, and it's about the story of having to deal with these teenagers. <laughs> like, you don't want to crush their spirit, but you have to. You would have done it too if one of these meddling kids. <laughs> well, but usually you do in this case. You, you try to avoid certain common mistakes. Like, yeah, you, you don't sort people by their hat, by a hat, also by their hat as well. Mm. Um, both are bad ideas. <laughs> the get off my lawn trilogy. <laughs> <Someone's laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> right, and the target will be jaded older people well, what you uh, could... who tend to not spend their money. Yeah, right. Well, what you could do is, is what you, you could set up like, you know, because you have experience with the young adult dystopia stuff, you know, as the ruler of this area, you could set up a, a thing to, you know, let these kids do, you know, do the important stuff, rebel against the system. And then, you know, they, they, they could go off and every once in a while, it's just kind of like a, a pressure valve release. It's like, yeah, yeah, you escaped. Good job. I've escaped. That becomes go a symbol. And, and then we make a TV show about that. Well, isn't that and the Matrix? like, that's awesome. Sorry? Isn't that basically the Matrix? I yeah. feel the, the, the I one is actually you're like referring to a pressure valve. To the second and third movies, which I do not acknowledge the existence of. <laughs> they were, Fair enough. They were interesting ideas. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah, so that's, yeah, the, they're a, a pressure valve. That's actually a they good... They get to escape the dome. It's a good description of a lot of young adult dystopia stuff. And it, it's true, actually. It's like, I, I, I like a lot of the ideas in this. I mean, there's like yeah. the host that was written by... Stephanie Myers, the person who oh, did right, Twilight. right, right, yeah. Terror, you know, the actual, like, love angle move thing in it is cringe-inducing and terrible. But mm. there's some interesting stuff with the actual, like, how aliens and the people being taken over by stuff and things like I that. I like the host. I thought it was pretty cool. Like, it's basically a romance between someone in the, someone in the symbiote that lives inside their body uh, and controls their their body like a puppet. Uh, so that's original. Like, why not get into that more? But there's, we've got to have some cute boys on the horizon. Yeah, you could have, it's like a love quadra angle. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That, that was, it was a love triangle, except the two sides of the triangle were in love with different people. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and he falls in love with the squidgy little alien that, in the body of the hot young teenager. Yeah, uh, which is interesting. It poses all sorts of dilemmas. Uh, so Luckily, yeah, it's, they found it's, another hot young teenager for the host, and then it all worked out. <laughs> right, right. It was moved into the body of another hot young teenager. Um, so he just apparently is into thousand-year-old space aliens in young teenage girl bodies. <laughs> 
So you know, I can everybody's really got to think. <laughs> Love trapezoid. Uh, was there another question, or uh, uh, shall we get to the contest? All right, let's do this contest thing. Okay, great. So I, I think I need to do screen sharing to make it work. Uh-oh. Uh, it's going to get complicated. One second. So how's the shift gone so far? What, is, what else has happened that's cool? Uh, well, we, I mean, more, more recently, we just hit uh, 23,000 for the shift. Ooh. I mean... We keep hitting. We have so many different wow. milestones we can hit. We're about to hit three hundred eighteen thousand for you guys the are like, thing. You guys are the Candy Crush of charities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's the little, the little like ding, yeah. yay. <laughs> keep the reinforcements coming. Yeah, yeah. Achievement unlocked. Okay. I refuse to upgrade Skype ever, so we'll see if this works. <laughs> Skype version one was fine. They got it right. <laughs> yeah, 1994 was the golden era for Skype. Can you Why see? Why uh, to change it? It looks like it's working on it. <laughs> so. <laughs> now, now, I'm just. Okay. You see it? I, see uh, a I think. Of a young man. Okay, so your job is to. Um, Match the, this is just a photo of you again. I don't see what the point is. <laughs> I know, I know. The resemblance is striking. This is uh, called post-apocalyptic hunks. Oh, no. And the job is for you to match the, the hunk to the movie, which you saw. You watched oh, no. all of That's, these movies for an I, I couldn't tell the difference between no. the two guys and the host. <laughs> and they were in the same movie and talking to each other. <laughs> exactly. When this it is going to be your hardest other, challenge. I couldn't tell. Yeah, so you have to match the uh, young starlet, male equivalent of starlet, uh, to the post-apocalyptic dystopia that they were from, which you, by the way, watched them star in for an hour and a half <laughs> in uh, the last year. All right. I'm going to go with uh, Hunger Games. Eh. This is uh, City of Ember. Oh. Is that, that's somebody looked like in City of Ember. No, these are headshots. Yeah, but these are like current a, headshots, right? Current headshots, yeah, just to oh, make that's it more just, difficult. That's, that's even worse. Chat, help us. I told you, this, Chat, will, help this us. challenge will grind you. You're in the arena, Paul. Just, Can you see this now? Just keep seeing Hunger Games. We'll get it right one day. It's true. Eventually, eventually it'll be right. No, I'll just blow out the tree like one of the games. All right. Yeah. Make your guess. Let's go Maze Runner. Yes, correct. Bing, yes. Bing, bing. All right. One and one. One for me, one for you. All right. Next. I don't know. <laughs> it's like the appetite for 19-year-old white dudes is just inexhaustible. <laughs> uh, that guy. He looks vaguely familiar. Don't get caught in his <laughs> dreamy eye. Is it young eye. Kevin Bacon? No. <laughs> Close. He's within six degrees of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> uh, ooh, The Giver. Eh. No. I'm not going to tell you the right answer because... Okay, that guy, uh, that's... Um... Two for me, one for you. Yeah, I think that guy's divergent. Eh. No. <laughs> Three for me, one for you. Which? That guy's divergent. That's that's ding, ding, ding. the doof, Yeah, that's the guy. Who, that that guy was nineteen and divergent. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No. Next. I salute you. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna have to look this one up. Ooh. That guy looks stylish, but I have no idea. I thought you watched these movies, Paul. Yeah, so? <laughs> <laughs> they all look the same. This is true. Uh, Take a guess. Ooh. I like 
I like Ender's Game. Eh. No? This guy this guy is not the Ender's Game guy. That guy looks like he's 12. <laughs> yeah, but this is a couple years later. Oh, that he had a growth saying, spurt. This is, he's saying this is not stuff about the actual... Th All right. <laughs> Who's Wait. this guy? Okay, this one should be a little easier. It's not easier. <laughs> That last one was The Giver, I believe. This awesome. one is not easier? And, and ask the room. You can get a lifeline. Yeah. Dude, I don't know. Logan's Run? Did you watch that? No, no. No, that's no, no. This does look like an older... It does, that's why I said... Is this uh -huh. Boyna's dog? Yes, correct. Ding, ding, ding. That is Don Johnson. Oh, right. The age it should have been when he was in that movie. In fact, he was 26 playing 18. Well done. You got that one eventually. <laughs> the difficulty is not letting up exactly here. Uh. This is the quarter quell now. <laughs> yeah, someone in chat said frozen. <laughs> frozen. He's not computer mean, animated as far as I can tell. <laughs> Although it might as well be. Close, it's Flynn. No. Um, His hair looks computer animated. Who is that? Help me. I don't know. <laughs> Take a guess. Uh, all right. I'm going to say Hunger Games on this one. Eh. No. <laughs> this is not the same man, by the way. <laughs> Hi, just. Okay, you get five seconds. Room, I know. <laughs> five, four, three, two, Maze one. Runner. Eh. Eh. Wait, no. Was that Maze Runner? No? No. Oh. <laughs> I don't know who these guys are. I swear that he's something through the same pictures again. Yeah. These yeah. last three? You've looped through oh. pictures, haven't you? <laughs> The last three are all from the host. Oh. <laughs> the, the last, these, this one and the previous two are all from the host. So I get all the points. Okay, ready, ready for the last one? All right. Okay. Post-apocalyptic hunks. <laughs> ah, this would be from Nazca. Excellent. Ding, ding, ding. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you hunky. Know, please. The umu. <laughs> How do I get off the screen? Chair? All right. So we've uh, fairly definitively proven that I can't tell the difference between 19-year-old pretty white guys. So I don't know. Well, that explains a lot, Paul. <laughs> a lot of angry phone calls I fielded for you. Phone calls. Uh, all right. Well, uh, how many of those were the Hunger Games? Were any of Just those one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that would have been a bad average if it just guessed the Hunger Games for everything. Yep, yep. No, I, I made it harder for sure. All right. Well, uh, I think we're going to have to let you go. Yeah, well, thanks for... Yes. Thanks for listening to me and <laughs> our nonsense. And check out our podcast, Fight the Future with Dan and Paul. You can hear us talk about all new... Young Adult Dystopia is every two weeks. Yeah, and so there'll be one coming out uh, the Monday after, uh, in next Monday, actually. Which is How I Live Now. Yes, How I Live Now, which is a, a rather depressing movie based on an even more depressing book, I believe. <laughs> yeah. so that's but it's not a depressing episode. To. Yes, it's an not a depressing episode. episode. Yeah. So. yeah, well, maybe odds ever be in Desert Bus's favor. Keep going, you guys. You're doing amazing stuff. I'm really right. proud of you, Paul. Thanks. Ciao. Bye. 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 All right. That's my brother. Uh, and yes, as uh, many people have pointed out, surprisingly enough, he does look like me and what? sound a fair amount like me. What? And it's almost like you both look 
incredibly like your dad. <laughs> yeah. If uh, there's a, my dad's shown up in at least one loading ready run video, but we, uh, yeah. Uh, all right.